Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new $30 Android TV box from Walmart known as the On UHD Streamer. Now recently we took a look at the FHD streaming stick that they also released for $25 and performance wasn't great there so I'm hoping for five more dollars on the UHD version we can get a better experience out of it. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this out of the box. I'm really eager to test it because I do know it has a higher end CPU than the one that came in the stick version, so we should get better performance out of it. For the remote, we have the same thing that came with that FHD stick. It's kind of Roku-like. It does have voice search functionality built in. And uh, here's the box itself. I actually thought it would be a little bigger than this. This thing is absolutely tiny. And they got the layout a little odd because we have the HDMI on one side and micro USB on the other for power in. Along with the Android box and the remote, we're going to get our 5 volt, 1 amp power supply and a 6 foot HDMI cable. So yeah, the box itself is much smaller than I thought it would be, but uh, like I mentioned, they do have the port layout a little odd here, so we'll have to kind of sit behind your TV, because on one side we have our micro USB for power in, and on the other side we have our HDMI port. I figured that we could kind of set this right beside the TV, but the way the layout here is, it kind of needs to go behind the TV to clean up all the wiring. So I'm not exactly sure of the specs on this unit here because when it comes to these on products they usually don't list the exact CPU model. So what I need to do is boot this up for the first time. I'm going to install IDA64. I'll get some information and uh, we'll see exactly what makes this thing tick. But there is one thing that I'm sure of. This is running a true version of Android TV 10 and it's a super clean version of Android TV. They haven't swapped out the launcher for any kind of Walmart branded stuff or on branded stuff. We just have a nice stock version of Android TV here. And this is something I really like to see. Because when it comes to these low cost streaming devices, one of the main ones you're going to hear about is the Fire Stick or the Fire Stick 4K. And personally, I'm not a big fan of their interface. I would much rather have real Android TV like we have here with this one. Okay, so after a little bit of investigation, I found out what we have here. For the CPU, we have the Amlogic S905Y2. This is a quad-core A53 CPU running at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is the Mali G31 MP2, 2 GB of RAM. Storage is a bit low here, giving us only 4.7 GB of usable storage, but OTG does work through that micro USB port, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. It does have AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2 built in, and it's running Android TV 10. And as long as they have the software set up on this correctly, we should actually see some pretty decent performance out of this little $30 streaming device. I've tested a lot of these S905 products in the past up to the S905X4, and I'm a big fan of it. So far, so good. Everything's been super smooth here, but that was kind of the case with the FHD streaming stick that we recently took a look at. This does feel a lot faster than my Roku TV that I have in the bedroom, but it's getting a bit dated. All of the streaming apps you want to use are on the Google Play Store. You can even sideload stuff if you want to. Netflix will give us UHD content, so we can do 4K here. Same thing with HBO Max, Amazon Prime, and Hulu. So we're good to go there with Widevine on this device. And just to give you a quick look here, we are at 4K60, and I want to test out a little bit of streaming from YouTube. I went through and I tested HBO Max, Hulu, and Netflix. It works fine with 4K. As long as you can find the 4K content you want to use, you're going to be able to run it here. Unfortunately, all of that stuff is protected, so I can't really show it playing here. But we can head over to YouTube, and this is kind of one of my go-to tests. We will make sure that we're at 4K. I'll turn on Stats for Nerds. Here's Stats for Nerds, so we can see if we got any frame drops here, and we will double check that we're at 4K. There we go. So far, so good, and by this time, in a video like this, you'll know if you're going to be dropping a ton of frames. We're at 8 drop frames, but if we take a look at the viewpoint, we're only at 1080p, and this is kind of the case with YouTube on Android TV right now. The video is 4K, but the viewpoint is 1080p. But uh, we're actually getting some really good performance here, and like I mentioned, I've tested the S905 X2, X3, and X4, and for 4K streaming, it works out just fine. Go ahead and see how long it takes to buffer. Not bad at all for a $30 device, so when it comes down to it, the new on UHD Android TV can handle 4K streaming. So now I want to get into a little bit of native Android gaming, and then we're going to move over to some emulation. Uh, I've got a few games here that I wanted to test out, it's just stuff that I picked up on Google Play. 
And for this, I'll be using a controller. I'm going to use the 8 bit Xbox controller. It doesn't really work for Xbox, but it's really made for Android. We're going to start off light here. It's actually a really fun game to play with the kids. We have Turbo Dismount. And I had a good feeling it was going to work out just fine here. Next up, Skyforce. Just another quick one we can get from Google Play. And uh, you're going to be able to play this no problem at all. So I want to take it up to some 3D games. Here's Real Racing 3. It's a very highly optimized game. It's actually been on the market for a little while, and I've been able to run this at full speed on lower end devices, so I figured we'd get good performance, and as you can see here, it is running pretty well. And finally, Dead Trigger 2. I usually run into a lot of issues with this game on low end devices, but here it's working pretty good. So this box does support OTG storage, but we only have one micro USB port on this unit, so you will need a splitter here. This is an OTG cable with power in, super easy to set up, it'll work with a hard drive, a USB drive, or like I have here, a micro SD card and a reader. And uh, just to give you a look here that it's working, I have a 128 gigabyte micro SD card and the reader plugged into that USB and it's showing up on the box itself, so we can access this storage. Unfortunately, you can't make it internal so storage. So it's just going to act as portable storage, but this does come in really handy if you want to run some emulators on this. That way we can store the games on that external drive, be it a USB drive or a micro SD card like I have here. Alright, so now it's time for a little bit of emulation. First up we have Dreamcast using ReDream. And if you watch my original video on the FHD stick, we had lots of Bluetooth controller issues with this one here. We're not having any issues at all. No delay, no lag or anything like that. And as you can see, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 using the ReDream emulator is actually working pretty decently. But this is an easier one to emulate, so we're going to take it up a bit. I got a feeling that this isn't going to do all Dreamcast games. And just as I thought, when we move over to Crazy Taxi 2, which is a bit harder to emulate than Marvel vs. Capcom 2, we're not quite at 60, I'm at the lowest resolution here, and it's just not going to run it at full speed. Moving over to N64 using MooPin64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store. Easier to run games, just like Dreamcast are going to work fine on this device. Here we have Diddy Kong Racing. And this is fully playable, like it is right here, but uh, again, we need to see if we can emulate the harder to run stuff, like 007 Goldeneye. And uh, we are running into a few issues here, but it's much better than I thought it would be. I figured we'd be at about 10 FPS, you know, stuttering all the way through. But yeah, it's handling it much better than I thought it would. It's not ideal, but I mean, you could get in here and play this game. And finally, for emulation, we have PSP using PPSSPP. Vulcan back in, no hacks, no frame skip. This is an easier one to run. We're at 2x with this one. It's working great. This originally ran at 30 FPS, and that's what we have here. It's fully playable. So easier to run games work pretty well with PSP on this device. But I figured we'd run into some issues with other games. Here's Tekken 6, which I consider a mid-range game to run. I did have to turn frame skip on, but I was able to go up to 2x. At 1x, with all the hacks on, it's only going to run at about 53 FPS. So in order to play these harder to run games, you will need to use frame skip on this thing. And the final thing I wanted to test here was a little bit of cloud gaming using GeForce Now. Overall, it's really not that bad. As long as you have a good connection, I'm actually kind of close to my router, and it's a pretty decent router, you should be pretty good to go. Every once in a while, I do notice a stutter here and there, but it all comes down to your network itself. So overall, I'm really impressed with the performance of this little $30 Android TV box, especially given that it's a Walmart branded TV box. We have full, real Android TV, no skins or anything like that. We do have access to Google Play, 
AC Wi-Fi. Overall, it's actually looking like a pretty decent deal. Now, I do wish they would have opted for USB Type-C instead of micro USB and added a little more storage here, but it's kind of hard to complain at this price point. When I originally tested the new ON FHD stick, I was a little worried that this wouldn't perform much better than that thing, but we're getting way better performance out of this for only five more dollars. If you're going to be using this on a super high-end 4K TV, you might actually have a little extra change in your pocket to pick up something like the new Google Chromecast with Google TV built in, or even the Shield TV. But if you're on a tight budget and you know what you're getting into, I could definitely recommend something like this. Now, as of making this video, these are in-store purchases only, but you can check out Walmart's website and see if it's in stock near you. My local Walmart had about eight of them in stock, and I've been seeing them pop up at other Walmarts close to me. So if you're interested in picking one up, I will leave a link in the description. You can check your local Walmart, or if you're watching this in the future, they might be available to order directly from Walmart's website. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this little device, just let me know in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.